Hello everyone and welcome to the first article about in-memory OLTP. This video article is part of a series I wrote on my blog www.9.nl uh, concerning in-memory OLTP, the big new feature in SQL Server 2014. Uh, in this article we will take a look at the introduction, so we'll take a look at what uh, in-memory OLTP is, uh, what requirements are for running in-memory OLTP, uh, what, what, what are the, the use cases for in-memory OLTP, uh, and of course what you can't and can't do with in-memory OLTP. A uh, quick introduction, my name is Enrico van der Laar, I'm a Microsoft SQL Server MVP, uh, I'm also a speaker on various SQL Server events, and I have my blog on www.9.nl. There's also some other ways to get in contact with me, as you can see in the bottom of the slides. I have a Twitter account, and you can watch these videos back on YouTube by following the link below. So, in-memory OLTP, like I said, the big new feature in SQL Server 2014. Uh, you could also know it by the name of Hackathon, because that was its, uh, its code name. And what in-memory OLTP basically is, it allows you to move tables completely from your disks into your memory. Um, so, of course, uh, the, the main reason for this is, is the performance gain. Uh, your, your system's memory, your RAM, is way faster than any storage system can, any, uh, can always be uh, at any time. So, uh, there's a big performance gain there. And how much Microsoft thinks about 5 to 20 times performance improvements are pretty common, as they say on their MSDN article. Nothing comes for free, of course. Uh, there are uh, a lot of things you got to keep in mind when you want to run SQL Server uh, in memory OLTP. There are some restrictions on your tables. Uh, you, of course, need a lot of memory if you have big tables. And, well, the, the, the architecture, the design of your database, you might need to think uh, about changing some data types or some uh, store procedures, as we will see. Uh, in the, the slides after this one. So first up, the requirements. What do we need to run in-memory OLTP on our SQL Server 2014 system? Well, we'll need a Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R2, uh, 1 gigs of RAM, uh, and 811 MB of free space for just the database engine. And as you can see, these are just the minimum specs of SQL Server 2014. And by minimal, I mean really, really minimal because, you know, one gigs of RAM, that isn't really common. If we want to run in memory OLTP, we'll need uh, two more requirements, uh, a 46-bit uh, edition of SQL Server 2014, and, of course, all the great stuff is an enterprise or developer, so we'll need an enterprise license if we want to run in memory OLTP. So, how do we install it? So, we, we want to try it out, we want to run in memory OLTP, what do we do? Well, if we run the SQL Server 2014 installer and we'll take a look at the features, you will probably notice there is no in-memory OLTP option. So, why is that? Because it's integrated into the database engine. So, this is awesome. This isn't a new feature you need to install. This isn't something you need to manage besides your reg uh, regular database engine service. It's just integrated in the database engine. So whether you decide to use it or not, it will always be uh, installed when you install your database engine. So a brief look at the uh, at the architecture. Um, there are some uh, some new things added, components into the engine, and I circled uh, both the, the the most new features, uh, which is uh, the in-memory native compiler, as you can see, uh, the natively compiled store procedures and schemas are are there as well, and the storage engine for memory optimized tables and indexes. And if you look below that, you'll see a memory optimized table file group, and we will get into that uh, later when we discuss in memory tables. So, the great part about integrating it directly into the engine is that it's way faster. Uh, the SQL engine doesn't need to get out of its own engine and go to another surface to access your in memory tables, it's just there in your engine. So your complete uh, query execution uh, can be handled inside that engine and it doesn't need to go outside of there. So everything happens in the engine. So that makes this really, really fast. 
Like I said, there are of course a couple of limitations, and most of those concern your data types or when you want to use natively uh, compiled store procedures, which are also a new option for in-memory OLTP. Well, you might have to recode some stuff, and this is just a quick overview of what you can and what you of what you cannot have in your tables or what features you cannot use. And these are just focused on your tables. So uh, things like uh, uh, lob data types like n-text, they are not supported. If you have a table with a, a large object uh, data type, you cannot move that into in-memory OLTP. Also stuff like uh, user data types, you cannot do that. Database mirroring is not supported. Out of close, I, I hope nobody is running that anyway, but it's not supported. Uh, triggers will not work. Computed columns will not work. Clustered indexes will not work. Uh, foreign keys, uh, check constraints, uh, and a big one, alter table. You cannot use the alter table command for in-memory tables. So it's either you create it, and if you want to change anything, you will have to drop the table and recreate it. So as you can see, uh, not all tables are automatically going to fit into in-memory OLTP. We'll need to think about it. We need to configure it. Uh, it is it is pretty it is pretty steep. Um, we'll, took a, we'll take a closer look into this in the in the next article in the series when we'll discuss uh, in memory tables uh, in, in larger detail. Uh, but as you can probably guess from this uh, table, you'll have to uh, keep some things in mind when you want to run tables into in memory. So how can we check if our tables are able to run in an in memory OLTP uh, environment? Well, Microsoft has added uh, two advisors for us to use, uh, the Memory Optimization Advisor and uh, the Natively Compiled uh, Advisor, which we can run to check if either our tables uh, are suitable for running in memory or our store procedures are suitable for running in memory. And we'll take a quick look at the Memory Optimization Advisor first. So here I have a SQL Server 2014 instance with a default AdventureWorks database. So if we scroll down to a table, which we are interested in to checking if it's suitable to move in memory, we can go there, we can right click there, and we can run the memory optimization advisor. So it's all integrated there. It's pretty easy, no, not real hard stuff to do. And it will give us a, a, a great welcome screen. Let's just click next here. And as you can see on this table, there is a lot not supported so, we have a uh, hierarchy ID, which is not supported. We have a user-defined data type, which is not supported. Uh, we have a computed column here, which is not supported. We also have some foreign keys. We have some check constraints. We'll have some uh, indexes, which are not supported. And we'll have some triggers. So, as you can see, this table isn't really a good idea to move to in memory. We'll have to uh, modify a lot of properties for this table to make it suitable. And if we go back to the slides, we also have the native compilation advisor. And I talked a little bit about the uh, restrictions of in-memory tables. There are a lot more restrictions for using uh, native compiled store procedures. And uh, what are native compiled store procedures? Uh, these are procedures that work with in-memory uh, objects and uh, are really, really fast. So these are actually really great if you want to use them in your in-memory system because they will boost the speed of your store procedures uh, by possibly a lot. A lot of stuff can go way quicker when you use a native compiled store procedure instead of a regular traditional store procedure. And it also comes with uh, a native compilation advisor. And again, we'll take a closer look into uh, native compiled store procedures in an article uh, a little further on in the series. So let's take a look at the uh, advisor. If we go to uh, programmability, store procedures, uh, we've got a couple of store procedures here. And we can do basically the same thing as the in memory tables. You can right click and we can take a look at the native compilation advisor. And again, welcome screen and it will validate the store procedure. And in this one we can see one or more unsupported Transact SQL elements exist. And if we click next we'll get a full list. And This is actually pretty neat because it will also give you the line where the option is used that isn't supported. 
Now you can just scroll down here and read what is supported and what isn't supported. Uh, on this link there is some information how you can uh, resolve uh, the unsupported uh, uh, unsupported commands. So again, it's pretty. Uh, you, you need to need to change a couple of things in your store procedures, just like as you needed to do in your memory tables. So it's just a quick overview about uh, both of the compilers. So why would you want to use in-memory OLTP? Because well, we talked about it's really fast. It will give you high performance. It's only in memory, which is way faster than traditional disk based uh, storage. Uh, the way you can use it, and uh, some of the use cases are usually in high transactional databases. And most of you will manage uh, one or more of those databases where you have certain hotspots in your database, those tables that get accessed a lot. Uh, with a load of updates, a load of inserts, maybe a load of deletes, maybe a load of selects, and uh, those tables are really just a hotspot of your data of, of your database. Those are the tables that get accessed and modified the most, and um, those can be great candidates to move to in-memory OLTP because those will have the, the the largest performance gain. So you can see that that's a pretty uh, a pretty good use case. To move those hotspots into your in-memory tables. Uh, also, uh, high performance requirements. If you have a small database that requires very high performance, like really, really quick, uh, there is no faster way than putting the tables, or maybe all of the tables, into in-memory, because you, we won't be needing to access the disk anymore. So you'll have a significant performance gains there. You can also use uh, for certain state tables that do not need to be durable. Uh, In-memory OLTP gives us a couple of options. We can have a durable in-memory table where data, everything is still locked in the transaction lock and data is persisted. And you can have a non-durable table, uh, which basically means that if your SQL Server crashes or you need to reboot your SQL Server, the data will be gone. Uh, there are some cases for that as well, like some session information on the website, which isn't critical that you can create to a, to a session table that if your SQL Server crashes, it isn't a big deal that you lose it. So it's also a great candidate. And of course, staging tables for data warehousing or BI actions, where you just need to load a, a large uh, amount of information into, uh, into those tables. So these are just some of the use cases. There are probably a lot more out there for where you can use uh, in-memory OLTP. The big one is always uh, just a performance gain. So you need to design your tables to support your in-memory OLTP. And if you can use it, you will probably have a lot of performance gain. So this is basically the end of this first video article. Uh, we took a look at some of the requirements for in-memory OLTP. Uh, we, take a look, we took a look at uh, what data types are supported and what data types weren't supported for using an in-memory OLTP. And we took a quick look at some use cases and the, uh, the advisors uh, for in-memory OLTP, the natively co uh, compilation advisor and the in-memory table advisor. Uh, in the next article, we will take a look at in-memory tables. So we'll go deeper into the table structure. How does it work? How can we create an in-memory table? And in the, another part of the article, we'll take a closer look at uh, some of the natively compiled store procedures, how they work, how you can create them. So stay tuned for the next article. And you can read the article yourself on the website www.9.nl. You can follow me on Twitter, and uh, uh, in the bottom of the slide is the link to even more videos. Thank you very much.